Hey everyone, welcome back to Elemental Cartomancy. It's Chris again. I say again because this is my second video that I'm filming today, but I don't know if I'll put them both out today, so that was really quite irrelevant. But anyway, I'm, I'm coming on again to film an unboxing of a package that I've just taken delivery of. Um, so yeah, let's have a, a wee nosy. Okay guys, so I've blanked out my address, hopefully successfully. Um, I'm going to open this. As you can see, it's not been opened or touched or anything like that. Um, so let's get into it and you'll pretty much be seeing my first impressions of this deck. Okay, so... Hopefully it's going to be an easy one to get into. Oh, I do often find that... Ugh, these boxes, although they have the perforated bit, it, it does this quite often. Let's see. I'm just going to have to <laughs> break into it like an animal here. Hang on. Wow. So... I paused the recording there, um, just to break into this thing. As you can see, I've pretty much had to like do all but use my teeth to get into the damn thing. But never mind, it's open now. Um, so let's have a nosy and see what's inside. Um, it is the Dark Goddess Tarot, and I'm really excited to have this. Um, I've been waiting, I think, about a week for this to be delivered, and it was late, so... I'm glad I finally got it. It's one that I've been kind of looking at and I'm in and on about buying for a while. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, we don't really need the scissors there now, hopefully. Um, so this is made by Red Feather, part of Schiffer. Um, it has this magnetic box or magnetic closure, sorry, rather. Um, it's a hardy, you know, good protective box, which is what we like to see. Um, when we open it up, we've got an amazing guidebook. Um, you know, we can see that this is a decent size. We get a full-sized depiction of each card. Um, and, you know, a good bit of information on the cards as well. Okay. Um, let's see what else the book has in it. So this is by, sorry, I should have said at the start, this is by uh, Ellen Lorenzi Prince. Um... And I believe it was Ellen that made Tarot of the Crone as well. Uh, I'm sure you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, so, content. So, we get an introduction. Um, tells us a bit about the deck. Uh, we get some information on working with the goddesses. It then goes into the cards, the majors, the minors. We get some tarot spreads. Um, the summary, the journey of the Dark Goddess Tarot. Um, and my personal journey with the Dark Goddess Tarot. Um, so we get a kind of key here uh, that breaks down the majors, it gives us the, the dark goddess that's associated with each uh, major um, and it tells us as well for the in terms of the, the courts for pages we've got Amazon, for knight we've got siren, for queen we've got witch and for king we've got hag. Okay. Um, and yeah, then it gets into the cards in terms of spreads, air, air, okay, so, alright, okay, so we get a few spreads here, um, so we've got substance and shadow, what, why and how, we've got goddess be with you, which is a five card spread, Uh, and then it goes into the summary. So we get three spreads, um, and then a bit about the you know the deck as a whole, and a bit about the author. 
Um, so yeah, I'm really impressed with the guidebook. I think it's really good, um, and it would be good for anyone who you know who hasn't well versed in tarot. It seems as though it's going to give plenty of information. Um, let's have a look at the cards then. So the cards come. Well, I think they're supposed to come with this plastic wrap around them, but it looks as though that has potentially just fallen off. Um, it's got one of these plastic inserts um, to hold the cards. This one seems to be a bit banged up, but that's not a big deal. I don't mind about that kind of thing. Um, let's pop the box to one side for now. The cards have got this beautiful gold gilding. Um, what's nice is that they're not stuck together. Um, you know, they're nice and slidey. I'm not having to kind of do this to kind of unstick them because of the gilding. Um, so that seems to be pretty well done. These are the backs. Um, they, they are quite laminated. They're quite glossy. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but but that I like that because it gives this nice slidey. Um, effect with the cards, which is which is what I like. Um, in terms of size, size, it looks as though it's a normal tarot size. Let's just do a quick comparison. Okay, so it's about um, you know broader and lo uh, longer than a normal tarot size. Um, you can kind of see the comparison there. Okay, let me see if I can get as a different view that's going to zoom us in a bit, um, and let us just see. The cards a bit closer. Oh, well, that didn't zoom us in that much, but that's fine. I can I can hold them up. So we start off with the full, um, and the full is the Sheila and a gig. Um, what I would say is I know that my videos are normally I'm normally chatting away and you know trying to give information while I'm doing these walkthroughs. I'm not really all that well versed in the Dark Goddesses at all. Um, I'll maybe know one or two um, and for that reason I'm probably just going to be showing the cards today and um, we might come back you know if there's desire for it I might come back at a later date after I've been working with the deck and talk a bit about you know the you know the choices um, of the goddesses and how they correlate with the cards because this is what I'm interested in getting to know. We've got Isis as the magician. So right away, I'm loving the art style. Um, I do love the, the uh, Egyptian style cards. I've got a couple of Egyptian tarot decks that I've not actually done anything with on my channel, so I could I might walk through them at some point. Um, we've got the Pythia or Pythia. I'm guessing this is Pythia because it seems to be a serpent, a snake, um, and they are the priestess in this card. In this deck, you can see the figures kind of reflective, deep, you know, um, thinking. The Black Madonna is the Empress. The Morrigan. Is sovereignty, so we have sovereignty rather than the emperor. So we have our hierophant, and would we say Sibyl or Sibylle? You need to uh, forgive me now um, if my pronunciation is off. If it was just one or two, then I would obviously have looked them up beforehand. And um, but obviously, I I've not had a chance to look at the entire deck beforehand and find out, you know, right, what ones am I not going to be able to pronounce? Let's look them up. Um, and also, I, there's going to be a fair few that I'm I'm not familiar with. So um, we've got Freya as uh, for the lovers. It's nice. Freya, I believe, was the, the wife of Odin. A star for the chariot.
Samavila for strength. I heard a quote yesterday that I felt went nicely with the strength, the concept of the strength card in general, but particularly this strength card. Um, and now I'm trying to recall exactly what it was. Um, so it was. Uh, there's, there's nothing stronger than being gentle, and there's nothing more gentle than true strength. Or something like that um and i can't remember who it was that said the quote so really i'm, I'm not doing too well am i <laughs> baba uh, baba yaga is our hermit Fortuna for the Wheel of Fortune. Um, I do know a bit about the goddess Fortuna. So, you know, the story goes that there was a king who, you know, thought he was untouchable. He felt on top of the world and he didn't think his fortune was ever going to change. But at some point, I think he had a dream or something Something came to him in a vision that um, where, you know, he realised he was being a bit cocky and, you know, basically at any point, Although he's on top of the wheel at one point, um, it's only so long before the goddess Fortuna comes and it's her job to kind of turn the wheel, keep the wheel of fortune ever turning. Sometimes you're at the top, sometimes you're at the bottom, sometimes you're, you know, in some intermediate stage. Um, but, but that wheel is ever turning um, and your time could come at any point where your position on the wheel changes. So it's just all about kind of making the most about where you are just now and or, um, you know, taking some stock in the fact that you're not always going to be where you are okay so if you feel as though you're at the bottom of the wheel you're hanging on for dear life here it's only going to be so long before before that wheel turns and your situation changes we've got matt for justice so i believe this is um from you know egyptian mythology um matt being the goddess who would weigh um you know when, when a person dies they come before matt um and their heart is weighed against a feather in order to determine you know whether they're a good person what kind of life they've led that kind of thing and that determines you know where they go um and i think it's anubis that um takes souls to to, I was going to say Hades there, but that wouldn't be quite right, would it? Um, to like the underworld or whatever the Egyptian equivalent is. Uh, is this Tiamat for the hanged one? Uh, Santa Muerte for death. Something really beautiful and appealing about this art style. It's quite simplistic, but just the, the, the vividity of the colours um, and, you know, just the detail that is captured. Um, of Brigid for alchemy, which would be temperance um, in a standard deck. Brigid, Brigid. Oh, dear me. So instead of the devil, we have corruption. Um, right now, how are we going to try and say this? Plazol Teotl. 
again, I do apologise for any pronunciations that I'm slaughtering. Um, this is very much a kind of first impressions of the deck rather than a, a detailed analysis or, you know, um, a walkthrough after having worked with it. Kali uh, for destruction, which is the tower. Spider Woman for the stars. I do obviously need to look up, um, you know, more detail on the Spider Woman. Um, but I, for me, you know, spiders in general usually indicate hard work, persistent you know, undying commitment and hard work. And that to me, it could be that this is a completely different message and connotation, okay? But just looking at that and the star card, usually we associate the star with being like kind of, you know, something outside ourselves, um, you know, guidance coming from out with rather than from within. But it's a nice and a quite a different unique message to come from the star card this idea of you know you make your own fortune or you you know you pick up the pieces and you salvage the pieces yourself after that kind of destruction moment um and it's like you know the the spider building its web you know there's you need to be persistent you may, need to be committed and you need to work hard in order to kind of um you know regenerate rejuvenate Ariane Rod for the moon. Sekhmet for the sun. This is actually has like quite I think it's just because of the line, isn't it? But it has strong kind of strength feels to me. Um, I think with the strength card we had the bear, didn't we? Um, the bear and the woman in the woods. But here we, we have this much more kind of Leo feel. Liberation for judgment. And we have the beautiful Persephone and this is the card that made me want to get this deck I just love this depiction you know um, Persephone being the you know the wife of Hades the daughter of Demeter um, who spends half of her days in the underworld and half of her days you know on Olympus with her mother um, we obviously see the kind of um, this half, the, the, the days she spends on Olympus here and the underworld here. We even see the change in her and we see the pomegranate here, which is what is tied her to, both what is tied her to the underworld and what is allowed her to be liberated. You know, the fact that she ate some of the seeds is what's tied her to it, but the fact that she left some of them as well is what's allowed her to, you know, spend some time with her, uh, with her mother, with Demeter. Um, yeah, this card is beautiful. And I think this is the first, maybe the first time I've properly got a card that represents Persephone in my collection. Um, so this is a, this is a special one. Um, so we have Coatl Cure. Again, apologies, um, but this is the world. Okay, so those are the majors. Now let's have a look at the minors. Um, so we have the sort of fire, um, water, 
air and earth. So going by elements rather than wands, swords, cups and pentacles or coins um, works for me to be honest. Um, you know I like my, my elements and my cards so um, Ace of Fire Vesta Hecate is our two of fire. Circa, three of fire. Um, can we foot you? Is that how we would say that? For the four of fire. Iris for the five. Epona for the six. Durga or Durga for our seven. Red Dakini for the eight of fire. Chantico for the nine. And Thion or Thione for the ten. God, look at the chains. Pele is our Amazon of Fire. Uh, Kadesh is our Siren. I want to say Cheridwen, but I'm not sure if that's right. I think this is Welsh, so it'll be pronounced differently. For our Witch of Fire. Uh, my man Brigitte for the Hag of Fire. Mamo Brigitte Okay, so we've got a sort of fire um for air. We have Nemesis as the ace of air. Athena is our two of air, a goddess of wisdom, helping us to make that decision. Blue Dakini is our three. So it was red Dakini the three of fire. No, no, red Dakini was something else. The eight. Okay. I thought maybe like the threes would be um uh, Newt 
as the four of air. Harionago, the five of air. So different feeling from this card is what we usually associate, uh, than what we usually associate with the five of air. Um, this is quite a kind of peaceful stance, um, or at least that's the way that I'm interpreting it. That's the way it feels to me. You know, quite calm and collected, um, and not the usual kind of defeated or egotistical feeling that we sometimes get from the Five of Air or the Five of Swords. Uh, Skithatch, Six of Air. Uh, Laverna, is there seven of air? The crow mother is our eight. Oops, sorry. Banshee, nine of air. So, not knowing anything about Banshee as a dark goddess, um, but I do know that, you know, the Banshee is a, I think it, it, it has origins in in Ireland, although I could be wrong there, um, as being a kind of screaming or wailing ghost type um, entity. Um, and you know the nine of air is the kind of nightmare card. It's the the kind of uh, it's a card that we associate with high, you know, psychological energy, um, and can often manifest in stress and anxiety, nightmares, being worried, that kind of thing. Um, so I can make that association with the idea of the banshee. But like I say, I will obviously need to kind of look up um, banshee as a you know as a dark goddess and and see what kind of information we get there and then arenas as the ten of air scaddy is our amazon of air can see where a lot of the cards does this um you know there's this damage to them kind of up above it doesn't really bother me to be honest i'm probably going to be riffle shuffling and shuffling them quite heavily so this kind of thing was going to happen anyway and um, but it's maybe just something to bear in mind if you know if that kind of thing annoys you if you're a bit of a perfectionist with your cards um you know this the card stock's maybe not the best in terms of you know staying 100 percent perfect or maybe that's just this copy um uh, lilith is our siren of air oh yeah is there a witch of air? And Dumavati? Is there a hag of air? Okay.
So onto the suit of water, we have the face of the deep as a race. Lorelei is our two. Uh, Mami Wata is the three of water. So we're getting this very kind of maternal energy here. Um, you know, creating that space in order to let the, you know, let, let the, the sisters or the children or, you know, whoever it is, um, build those connections you know this is about this card the three is about growth and nurturing um and creativity and water is about connections to herself to other people you know to the question you know whatever it is that we're, we're trying to do water is telling us how we connect um emotionally so this to me is all about growth of those emotional connections um, and we can see that Mami Wata is creating that space in order for that to happen that's how I would read this just at a glance anyway uh, Let or Lete for the four of water Uh, so La Llorona or Lorona for the five of water. If this is Welsh, then I think it would maybe be pronounced Lorona. We do get this uh, this feeling of you know grievance, sadness that we do normally associate with the five of water. Uh, Tefnut for the six of water. Mive for the seven. Sedna for the eight. We have the Lady of the Lake for the nine. So your dress is one with the, you know, with the, the water, with the waves. And Ixachel for the 10, Ixachel. I know I'm slaughtering that, but I can't really think how that would be pronounced. Okay, Skyla for our Amazon of water. Skyla. Aphrodite for our siren of water. So this is the equivalent to the Knight of Cups. So this is all about, you know, acting, action and the field of the emotions of emotional connections. You know, if you're single and ready to mingle, then to me, the Knight of Cups would represent you if you're kind of looking actively looking for a partner equally if you are starting a new business and you're looking for to form partnerships and um you know business partners relationships with customers all that kind of thing that's also knight of cups energy so it makes sense to me to see the aphrodite as um you know is associated as the siren of water Uh, so this is our Witch of Water. 
So I'm going to try this. I'm going to say Haya Akitsu Hime or Him Haim Akitsu Haim. So this is the Witch of Water. And we have Ran as our Hag of Water. Okay, and last but by no means least we have our suit of earth. So we have Gaia as the ace of earth. Gaia being the, the primordial mother um and the you know in Greek tradition um it all started with Gaia. There was nothing, then there was Gaia, then there was Gaia and Uranus, and from thence that's where everything was born from, so yeah, I, I like Gaia as the, the Ace of Earth, that makes sense, at least in my mind it does. Hell as the Two of Earth. And again, I love all of the images, um, but particularly, uh, you know, the the, um, the polarity I think is what I'm thinking, what I mean, and this card is beautiful. Uh, Norns as the three of Earth. The Sphinx is the four of Earth. Demeter is the five of Earth, so this is the mother of Persephone, and we see Demeter represented here during the, you know, what would be the winter months, um, and this is when Persephone is um, in the underworld with Hades, um, and Demeter is, is mourning, you know, the loss of her. Tsunokwa. Uh, the Six of Earth. Ereshkigal. Seven of Earth. Kyleech. The Eighth of Earth. Bloodyweed, or blood bloodyweed, for the nine of earth. And Allah, for the ten of earth. have Artemis as the Amazon of Earth. Artemis, I believe, was the Greek goddess of the hunt. Is that right? Well, would make sense given that she's shown with a bow and arrow. Balbo as the siren of Earth. Inanna, the Witch of Earth. And she who watches as the Hag of Earth.
Okay guys, so I've been giving this a good shuffle. Um, normally at this point I would do a six card interview spread. But with this deck, because you know I feel each of the individual cards, I really want to spend the time looking at the book for them. Um, and you know just reading up on the particular dark goddess and you know what the intention of the meaning of the card is what i'm going to do instead this time is i'm only going to pull two cards i'm going to pull one card for the kind of tell me about yourself you know the personality of the deck um and one card for how can i best work with and collaborate with the deck um, so this would normally be positions one and five in the normal interview spread. Um, so these are the ones that I want to kind of focus on and we'll spend a bit of time looking at the book for each of the cards that get pulled. Um, in terms of shuffling, um, it's nice to overhand. Um, in terms of riffle shuffling, um, so we can get that bit done okay. Um, but they're quite difficult to bridge, I think, just because of the slidiness of them. Um, I ended up kind of almost bending them when I tried to bridge them or you know do the riffle wave so I've just been kind of doing a bit of this with them um and yeah overhand they shuffle nicely enough so they do okay so let's give them a wee cut And let's pull our two cards. Okie dokie. So, like I say, first card, tell me a bit about yourself. Um, what is your personality? Um, this is basically just the kind of the significator card for the deck, if you want to think about it that way. So, we have the Siren of Air or Lilith. Um, now, if I remember correctly, the Siren is like the Knight. Okay, so I mean, right away, if we're just thinking about siren of siren of air energy, um, we're thinking, you know, fast moving, fast speaking, very intelligent, very intellectual, can take in a lot of information, can process a lot of information, um, without much effort, and can give, you know, cohesive intellectual answers to the questions that are asked very kind of logical um you know that that air we we associate with the kind of the conscious mind and the kind of logical processes um and it looks as though my table camera has just given out which isn't the best let me just pause this and we'll try and get it back okay guys so apparently my my table camera has had enough for the day um so we're just going to finish off the video like this face to face just you and me and i'll hold up the card for us to see so like i say we're talking about the siren of air which is like the knight of swords very kind of quick at process and inter uh, uh, pro processing information uh, it's going to give very intellectual messages very kind of um, well thought through messages um and it, suggest that it'll be good for very kind of down-to-earth intellectual problems okay um so that is our siren of air um now let's have a wee look and see what the book says about the siren of air um and i'll just need to read out because like i say i can't really show you with the um you know with the table cam so again this is what we're getting we're getting a full-sized illustration and a full page of information it says lilith spreads her shadow over her own origins she is sumerian and babylonian she is jewish and european she is a powerful goddess a spirit of the wind an evil succubus her oldest known titles include maid of desolation and maiden of darkness lil means wind or spirit sexual female demons called lilitu appear in sumerian writings from 3000 bce onward in christian and jewish medieval folklore lilith is a sexual vampire a succubus delighting in the defilement of men by causing them wet dreams Lilith, the winged storm demon, represents the goddess uh, Inanna's fears that she must conquer the Sumerian tale of the um, Hulupu tree. This is a sacred tree that Inanna 
plants in her garden and tends until she comes of age, when she must cut it down to make her bed and throne. But the dark maid has made her home in the tree trunk, her bird has made a nest in its branches, and her snake has curled al- among its roots. In Hebrew legend, Lilith is called Night Owl and Screech Owl. She refuses to have sex beneath Adam and is cursed to give birth to 100 demon children each day. Both of these stories end with her fleeing into the desert to find peace. Even in a single ancient depiction, Lilith defies a simple definition. With her wings, taloned feet and dire owl companions, she is a demon of the night reflecting the mysteries of dream and death. Her jewels and her crown, the Shagura crown of the steppe composed of multiple horns, are all symbols of the Queen of Heaven and Earth. Her frontal nakedness sings with the power of sexuality and fertility. The rods and rings in her hands speak of universal laws and principles. Her gaze is direct. Her hands are uplifted in a holy gesture. She holds sway over realms of violence, fear and mystery. She holds sovereignty over sexuality and all forces of nature. Over the complete magical processes of life and death. And then we get a bit that says, When Lilith appears, in darkness, fears and monsters multiply. Use your imagination to entertain yourself, not harm yourself. Know where you are pushing the boundaries about what is reasonable, even while knowing that some things will never make sense. In darkness, power hides. Know it, face it, realise it, or sorry, release it, and work it. Quit hiding from yourself all that you are and all that you feel. It is time to quit compromising your soul. Dark desires do not have to be acted out in illicit ways to be useful for creation or motivation. Denial does not illuminate the darkness. In this world, sex and death come intertwined. They exist They exist one with another to bring endless variety to life. So there's quite a quite a lot of information that's given there. Um I'm trying to reconcile the information that we're given with the, the what I know about the what I would usually associate with the kind of Knight of Swords or Siren of Air type energy. Um I suppose the the idea of kind of using your imagination you know, to entertain yourself and not harm yourself. So using your intellect, using the mind, your imagination, using that tool that we've all got. And one of the things that makes us as humans really kind of unique and, you know, it's it's one of our kind of gifts from God, if you want to think about it that way. Um, Being able to use that in a way that furthers yourself and doesn't hold you back. And maybe that's something that this deck is going to be able to help us with. It's going to help me help me help us build ourselves up you know um learn to use the tools that we've been given in order to further ourselves and not to hold ourselves back um so that is tell me about yourself and the next card is um you know what was the next card it was going to be how do i best learn and collaborate with you and we've got the alchemy card um which is bridged uh that's not focusing very well is it um, so this is the equivalent of temperance in, like a, for example, a Smith weight deck. Um, so right away, alchemy. Um, it's all about you know balance and different elements. Okay, so this right away suggests balance. Um, it do, it's not a kind of you know pick me up for every single question that you come across. You know, this isn't a deck that wants to be held in the in the hand all the time and every time it's like you know what should I do? You know, should I have chips or potato wedges for my dinner pull pull like it's not that kind of deck there needs to be an element of balance you know you need to kind of have set in your mind what you want to use the deck for okay and come to it when you've got a question that it can be useful for okay but there needs to be some sort of temperance there needs to be some sort of balance you need to balance those elements out 
Um, let's see what the book says. So what I'll maybe do, rather than reading out the, the entire caption, um, I'll just read out the kind of when Bridget appears that bit. Um, so the situation is improved by adding a combination of skill and attention. Difficult feelings require expression, not suppression. Keen your grief. Speak your rage. Forge your purpose. Pull the personal pain out of your soul for the fuel to make something tangible from it. Show the world what it is and what it should be. Bring your regular practice to another level through the implementation of a gr grander vision and deeper desire. Find inspiration in the elemental world. Observe the will and the dance of fire. Sense the mystery and the wisdom of water. Bring balance into your life. If you feel too withdrawn, add activity. Stretch your legs, your arms, your neck, your mind. If you feel too busy, add quietude. Turn off the music, the program, the monologue, the lights. Balance is not a static but a living process. It is a measured flow, a graceful dance performed each day. So, on reflection and after reading that, and, you know, what that says, there's nothing there that surprises me. There's nothing there that makes me think, oh, I wouldn't have thought of that in terms of temperance. But it's kind of like, you know, well, you've asked the question, how do you work with me and collaborate with me? Well, take it each day at a time. You know, one day you might want to kind of uh, do a big, massive spread with me and really kind of delve into things. One day you might want to pull a one card one day you might not want to pick me up at all, you know. Take it each day at a time and just what is the what's the correct balance for you and don't expect that to be the same day in, day out. Okay? So it's about being flexible um, and coming and going with how you're feeling um, and how you feel pulled to use the deck. And I'm saying you when really I mean me, but you know what I mean. So... I hope that this has been enjoyable for everyone. Um, this has been the Dark Goddess Tarot by Ellen Lorenzi Prince. Um, I'm already loving it. I feel as though I'm going to learn so much about all of these kind of different characters across the deck. I will be looking up um, and kind of uh, tightening up on my pronunciation of all of the different um, different. Uh, dark goddesses again i'll just say apologies across the board for anything that i've mispronounced or anything like that and um, this was very much intended to be a first impressions so thanks very much for watching guys and take care everyone i'll see you next time